guys, today we're looking at the HL content of 1.1 competitive markets. The concepts that we will cover are demand curves as linear equations, supply curves as linear equations, and equilibrium with linear equations. So lots of linear equations. This is what a linear demand equation looks like. QD equals A minus BP. Now QD is of course quantity demanded, A is the quantity demanded when price is zero, and negative B is the slope of the curve. As we know, demand curves have a negative slope due to the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded, hence the negative in the equation, and P is price. You will need to know how to plot a demand curve, so we'll do that now. The example in the syllabus is QD equals 60 minus 5P. So we'll use that and we'll say that is the demand for Chewbacca mass. There are four steps to take to plot a linear demand equation. Number one, we find where the line intersects Q or the X axis. So this is where price equals zero. So we just substitute that into the equation. We do some very simple maths and we get that the quantity demanded at price zero is 60. Secondly, we find where the line intersects P, the y-axis. So this is where quantity demanded equals zero. So again, we just substitute that into the equation and solve for P with some very simple maths. So just think back to year eight or nine maths and you'll be okay and we get our price equals 12. Now it's good practice to get one more point that we can plot. We use another price between the two we already have, zero and 12, because we know that this will appear within our range. So we'll use six, and we'll substitute that in, and we get another point where price equals six, quantity demanded is 30. Now, the last step is to plot the points and draw the line. We have our data below, so we'll just put these on. Price zero, quantity, 30, quantity 60, price six, quantity 30, and price 12, quantity zero. Then we add our line, will always be a straight line, and we are done. Now we'll look at what a shift in demand looks like in the world of linear equations. An increase in demand for Chewbacca masks could happen due to him starring in a new movie, The Force Awakens. The variable A will change. Remember that an increase in demand is an increase in quantity demanded at any price level. This includes zero, so whereas 60 were demanded at zero before, if we change the equation to QD equals 80 minus 5P, there are now 80 demanded at zero. So we follow the steps from before and plot our points. Pause now and try this. Okay, so here are the values that you might have got. Uh, we plot again. There we are. And we see a parallel shift to the right. And of course, if A was decreased, well, we see this parallel shift when A is increased. So if A was decreased, we see a shift to the left. Now we can also change the slope. As we know, the slope of a demand curve indicates its elasticity. We've seen that changing variable A shifts the curve, and now we will see that a change in variable B changes the elasticity. In the market for Chewbacca masks, let's say that Disney shuts down some counterfeit manufacturers. This means that there are fewer close substitutes for the masks and that demand will become more price inelastic. A lower number for the variable B will mean a steeper curve. We'll show this by changing the original minus five to minus three. So it's now QD equals 60 minus three P. Okay, pause again and work out what our points will be. Okay, so here they are, 
and now just plot them on. There we go. And as we can see, a more inelastic demand curve. So in summary, a change in variable A will shift the linear demand curve and a change in variable B will affect the price elasticity of demand and the slope of the curve. Okay, supply curves as linear equations. This is the supply curve from... Oh, what's not? This is an example of what a supply curve would look like. So, QS is the quantity supplied, and I've written QD there, but you know what I mean. C is the quantity supplied when price is zero, and D is the slope of the supply curve. As we know, supply curves have a positive slope due to the positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. Hence, this is a positive number. P, again, is price. Now, let's plot the supply curve. The example in the syllabus is QS equals negative 30 plus 20P. So we'll use that and say that it's the supply curve for iced coffee. Now, there are four steps, again, to take to plot a linear supply equation. Very much the same as plotting a demand equation. Firstly, you find where the line intersects the x-axis at price equal to zero. So you plug that into the equation, solve for quantity supplied, and we get negative 30. So that shows how unwilling Farmers Union would be to supply their iced coffee at price equal to zero. They don't actually supply a negative 30, but it's what it's an indication of how unwilling they are to supply. Secondly, we find where the line intersects uh, the y-axis, so it's where quantity supplied equals zero. So we plug that in, some simple rearranging gets us to a price of $1.5.50. And again, good practice to find one more point where of quantity supplied. Uh, so if you put in that price equals four, we just do our maths and we work out that at four dollars, farmers union will supply fifty iced coffees. Now the last step is to plot the points and draw the line. So here we go. We've got our data and we just plot them on. Price zero, quantity negative thirty. Uh, price one point five, quantity zero, and a price four, quantity fifty. Then we just add our line and we are done. Now again, we'll look at a shift of this curve. An increase in the price of milk would cause a decrease in supply because milk is a pretty major input into iced coffee, so the variable C will change. Remember that a decrease in supply is a decrease in supply at every price level. This includes zero, so whereas minus 30 was supplied at zero before, if we change the equation, to QS equals minus 40 plus 20P, there are now minus 40 supplied at zero. Follow the previous steps and plot the points. So pause now and give that one a go. Great, here are the values you might have got, so we'll plot the curve. We see a parallel shift in the supply curve when the variable C is changed. So it's shifted to the left, just as we would expect from the theory that we already know. Now we'll look at elasticity, the slope. So of course we can change the slope of the supply curve as well. It indicates price elasticity of supply. We've seen that changing variable C will shift the supply curve. And now we'll see that a change of variable D will change the elasticity. In the market for iced coffee, let's say Farmers Union develops a way to have their iced coffee keep longer. This would mean that it can be stored for longer periods and that therefore the supply becomes more elastic. A higher number for the variable D will mean a flatter, more elastic curve. We'll show this by changing the original 20 to 30. So it's now QD equals negative 30 plus 30P. Okay, so pause again and work out what our points will be. Okay, here they are. And you would plot again. So price equals 1, 
coronary supply was zero, pricing was four, coronary supply would be 90, so that'd be out there somewhere. And we just draw the line. Okay. Now, given that we've got linear demand and supply functions, we now have to be able to calculate equilibrium price and quantity. Nothing complicated here. We just get the two equations. So these are the demand supply equations for a Wendy's shaking dog deal. Now we just get the two equations and combine them. So now it becomes 80 minus 10p equals minus 10 plus 5p. So some simple maths to solve for p and we get the price equals $6. Then we just substitute the 6 into either equation and we get our equilibrium quantity. I've done it with the demand function, but you'll see you get the exact same role, uh, result if you use the supply function. Okay, we also have to plot two linear equations and determine from the diagram the equilibrium price and quantity. I suggest you pause this and, and try with these two equations to, to plot it out in your graph. Okay, points you would have calculated would be similar to these, so we'll just uh, plot these out. There we go. Now, you can tell just by looking that equilibrium price is $6 and that equilibrium quantity is 20 Make sure you use the unit dollars when stating the price. Six by itself won't get you the full marks. Now, one more thing that's required is for us to state surpluses and shortages at different price levels so we'll just go here now if you draw your diagrams correctly you should be able to just read them off the diagram otherwise plug the price into the equations and work out the difference so we'll say at price of seven dollars quantity demanded we can just plug those into the equations we'll say quantity demanded is 10 quantity supplied is 25 so that is a surplus of 15 shaken dogs. And if we go low, if we look at a price of $3, for example, we plug the 3 into our equations, and we can pretty easily see that there is a shortage of 45 shaken dogs. So this is all you need to know for the HL content of 1.1 competitive markets. I don't think there's anything too difficult there. Just uh, make sure you know this and be prepared to do exercises in class.